Okay, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of DockerCon 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are Justin Cormack, CTO of Docker. Uh, I was also involved in the CNCF, technical oversight and a variety of other technical activities. Justin, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Virtual this year, again, twice in a row, and maybe next year we'll, we'll be in person, but certainly hybrid. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too, yeah. In person would be, would be nice one day, one of these days, yes. Yeah, when we get real life back, it's almost there, I can feel it, but there's so much activity. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about, certainly on theCUBE, and even here at DockerCon, same, same story, the pandemic really hasn't truly impacted the developer community because most of the people have been working remotely and virtually for many, many decades. And, and if you think about just in the past 10 years, all the innovation in cloud has come from virtual teams, open source software has always had uh, good kind of governance and uh, democratization of kind of how the code's built. So not a beat's been skipped during the pandemic. In fact, if anything, su supply chain of software development has increased. So- Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's definitely true that open source was really the place that pioneered remote working. It was, um, you know, and a lot of the work methods that people worked out to do open source, um, you know, async communication and things like that were things that people have adopted. Um, it's it's a slightly different community. I mean, I think that, um, you know, some of the, I, I'd say open source projects like meetings less than um, <laughs> some other organizations, <laughs> but, um, but definitely that, that it was definitely that pioneering thing. And um, a lot of the companies that started off remote first were in open source software and they started off for those reasons as well, because developers were already working like that and they could just hire them and they could continue to work like that. You know, one of the, ups so, one of the upsides of all this is that people won't tolerate even Zoom or in-person meetings that just go on. You know, 15, 30 minutes, good, good call. Why even have a meeting? What's the purpose? Async, totally the way to go. Let, let's get into the um, developer uh, community. One of the things I love about DockerCon this year, 2021, is the envelopes being pushed again, almost to another level, is almost a new level. This next level of containers is bringing more innovation to the table and productivity and simplic simplicity. Some of the same messages last year, but now more than ever, stuff's going on. What are you hearing directly from the community? You talk to a lot of the developers out there. You have millions of developers in the Docker ecosystem. What are they saying now in 2021? What's going on in their mind? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 an area, I mean, more and more people are using Docker and they're using it every day. And that's, um, you know, it's a change that's been going on obviously for a while, but, you know, it begins to sort of, you know, as it, as it spreads, the, the kind of developers using Docker are so different from, when I, you know, when I started Docker, um, you know, coming up for six years ago, it was a very, um, you know, bleeding edge type thing for people, for early adopters. Now it's everywhere, you know, millions and millions of ordinary developers are using Docker every day. And the kind of things they're telling us is, well, some of this stuff that we thought, well, you know, five years ago was an amazing breakthrough in simplicity. Now that's on its own still too hard. Um, one of the things I mentioned in my in my keynote was that you know talking to developers who are just primarily have been working Windows all their life, um, but more and more applications being shipped on Linux and they're using Linux containers, but they find Docker files really hard because they're really you know Linux shell scripts and not a Windows developer doesn't know how to use a, a, Win, a Linux shell script and it's um you know it's, it's bringing it down to that next level of ease of use where um, you know you can adopt these things more easily they're pitched at the you know at the kind of level of developer who is just thinking about you know their language their apis and and they don't want to have to learn kind of lots of new things to do docker they'll learn some but they'll they really want it to kind of integrate better into the environments they work in and um, you know, help them more and, you know, really, um, really, you know, um, you know, we've been working on a lot of detailed um, instructions about like how to use Docker better with JavaScript and Python, you know, because people have told us, you know, be specific about these things, tell us exactly how I do that, make things work well with the way I'm doing things now. What is the big uh, upside for uh, containers for the folks watching 
And I mean, last year, one of the most popular sessions was the one-on-one -on -one, uh, Peter McKay did, which was fascinating, fa packed with people. And the adoption of containers is going everywhere and enabling a lot of growth. What's the main message to these new developers that are coming on board the ecosystem? I think, um, I think what's happening is that people are gradually, are very slowly starting to think about containers in a different way. When, when we started, the, the question everyone kept asking was about containers and VMs, what's the difference? That, that question kind of really, um, didn't really kind of really address what the big chain, fundamental changes that containers made to how people work was. I like to think about it in terms of the um, you know physical shipping containers. Like people are concerned about like can you escape from the box? Um, you know, can I get out of a container? These kinds of questions. It's not, not really the important question about containers. Is can you escape from the box? The question is, what does it enable you to build? What, you know, the the um, the shipping container let us build these supply chains that let people um, you know build. Um, products and factories and things that would never have been possible without that that ability to actually just ship things in a routine and pre predictable and reliable and secure way. Um, you know, getting that content and the the things that come in the container in order to let you actually work more effectively. And you know, so I think that now we're talking about like. What's the effect of containers on the industry as a whole? Um, what are the things that we can learn about repeatability and you know, documentation and metadata and reliability that we kind of talked about a little bit before, but these are becoming the important use cases for containers. It's, containers are really about, um, you know, they're not about um, that kind of security and escape piece, they're about the content, the supply chain, and your actual process of working. What do you, uh, first of all, great feedback on, I mean, great call out on the security piece. I want to get that in a second. I think that's a killer one. You mentioned supply chain. Um, can you define software supply chain? Is, and, and is that where the automation value comes in? Because a lot of people are talking about automation as improving the developer experience. Um, so can you clarify quickly, what is? what do you mean by the uh, software supply chain? And is that where automation comes in? Am I getting that right? Yeah, so the software supply chain is really that process by which um, you know you get components of software to build your applications. Around ninety nine percent of companies are using open source software to build applications, and the vast majority of the pieces of any modern application are consist mainly of open source software and some some closed source software and some software that people are writing themselves. But you've got to get these components in. You've got to make sure that they're updated and scanned and they're reliable. And that's the software supply chain is that process for bringing in components that you're using to build your applications. And so, you know, it, the way automation comes in is just because there's so much of the software, dealing with it manually is just difficult. Um, and it's an ongoing process of build and test and CI and all those uh, um, scanning and all those processes. And I think as software developers, we 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 fundamentally know that the the most valuable things are the things that we automate. Um, you know, they're the things that we we do all the time, and they're um, important. And that a lot of building a software is about building proce repeatable processes rather than just doing things one by one because we know that we have to we have to keep updating software we have to keep fixing bugs we have to keep improving software and so we've got to be able to keep doing these things and automation is what helps us do that you know I was talking to Dana Lawson who's the SVP of engineering at GitHub and she and I were chatting about this one topic I want to get your thoughts on it because she was definitely on, on of the camp of automation helps with productivity, no doubt. Check, double check there. The question I have for you is how do you see the impact on say the developer experience and innovation specifically? Because, okay, I can see the productivity. Okay, something happens a bunch of times, automate it. Then you start thinking about supply chain, then you talk about developer experience. And ultimately with Kubernetes around the corner with the relationship with containers, you can see the cloud native 
benefits with from an innovation standpoint. Can you share your thoughts on the automation impact to experience for the developer and the innovation strategies they need? I mean, I think that um, one of the ways we're trying to think about everything we do at Docker is that we should be helping build processes rather than helping you do something once because um, you know, you say if you do something three times, you want to automate it. But what if the first time you did it, that 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 could also build that automated, you know, automated process? How, if it was, what, why isn't it as easy to make something automated as it is to do it once? There's no there's no real reason why yeah. it shouldn't be. And I think it's, um, you know, I think that um, you know that kind of um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day about how they were that they had kind of reversed their thinking and they'd found that often it was easier to start with automation and harder to do things manually. And that's a <laughs> you know, that's a long that's a kind of real reversal of that kind of role between automation and doing stuff once and and it's not how we think of it. But I think it's really interesting to think about that kind of thing and how could we make automation, you know, really, really simple. Well, I mean that's a great example when you have that kind of um environment and certainly the psychology is better to have automation but if everyone's saying it's hard to do manual that means they're at some sort of scale right so scale matters right so so as you start getting the you know the the sre vibes going and you start getting cloud scale uh, and cloud native apps that's going to be cool now the question that i want to ask you because what the other thing that's happening is more people are coming into open source than ever before not just young developers but also end users not like the, the hardcore end users we're talking like you know classic enterprises are coming in so as more um, developers come in and increase over the year, what does that mean for the experience for developers? Now you have, does that change? How do you view that? Because as more developers come in, you have institutional knowledge, you have scale, you have learnings. What's your thoughts on, on the impact as, as the population of developers increase? What does Docker, how does Docker view that? Yeah, no, I think it's a really interesting trend. I mean, it's, it's been very visible in CNCF for the last few years. We've been seeing a lot more active end user companies doing open source. I mean, Spotify has been one of the examples um, with their backstage project they brought into CNCF and other areas where they work. And I think it's, um, you know, I think it's um, it's part of this growing trend that's really important to Docker. Um, you know, Docker is a bottom up technology adoption company. Developers are using Docker because it works for them and they love it. Um, and, um, developers are doing open source in their companies because open source works for them and they love it. And, it, you know, it works for their business as well. And um, whereas historically, like the, the model was you would buy kind of, um, you know, large enterprise products, um, you know, with big procurement deals that were often not what the developers wanted. Um, but now you're you're getting developers saying what we want to do is adopt these open source projects. We want to um, because we know how they work. We we already understand them. We know how to integrate them better into our processes. And I think um, it's that developer led demand that's really important. And it's the it's the kind of integration that developers want to do. The kind of products that they want to work with because they because they understand them and love them and they are targeted at developers and that's incredibly important. And I think, you know, that's very much where Docker's focused. And um, we really want to, you know, uh, um, you know, open sources are the core of everything we've always done. We've we've built with the open source community and we, we've kind of come from that kind of environment and we've built things that, you know, we love as developers and that, that other developers love. Talk about um, your thoughts on security. Obviously it's always, uh, um, build in from the beginning, shift left is the ethos, um, day two operations, AI ops, whatever people want to call that, you know, post deployment um, uh, mode. Security has to be at the center of this. Containers can be a great solution and give some great flexibility for developers. Can you talk about your, your view and Docker view on the security uh, posture and situation? Yeah, I mean, I think um, shift left is incredibly important because just doing thing doing things late is just everyone knows is the wrong thing from the point of view of productivity but i think shift left can just mean ask the developers to do everything which is um 
really a bit too much. I think that um, you know sometimes things need to be um, you know shifted even further left than people have actually thought. So, like, why are you know why are you expecting developers to scan components to see if they're allowed to if they should be using them or they should be updated? Why hasn't that happened before the developer even gets those? You know, I think there's a I sort of my keynote about this whole piece about trusted content, and it's really important that you know we really shift that even further left. So it's long before it gets to the developer; those things are happening. Um, security, uh, security is a I mean is a huge area, um, of of course, and it's, but it's very much um, we need to help developers because security is non-obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that you know the more you understand about security, the the, the more you understand that it's not really, um, it, it's not, it doesn't come naturally to people, and they need to be helped with it, um, and they need to learn a lot about about things in a way to. I mean, I found I found myself that you know, learning how to think like an attacker is a really important way of thinking about how to secure software. It's like what what would they do rather than um, just thinking about. What ha the normal kind of oh this works in the happy path? It's what happens if things go wrong yeah. that you have to think about as well. Um, so there's a lot of work to do to educate and help and build tools that help developers there. Um, and it's been really good working with Sneak because they're a very developer-focused security company. That's why we chose to work with them. Um, whereas historically, um, security companies have been very oriented towards um, you know, kind of the operator side of it, not the developer side, not the developer experience. Um, and the other piece is really around supply chain security. Um, that's just kind of a new security area. And it's very important from the container point of view, because one of the things containers let you do is really control the components that you're using to build applications and manage them better. Um, and so, um, we can really build tooling that helps yeah. you helps you manage that, helps you understand what's in a container, helps you understand where it came from, how it was built, and automate those processes and um, you know sign and authenticate them as well. And uh, you know we've been working on with CNCF on Notary V2, which is for signing uh, revamp of the container signing process because people really want to know who originated this container, where did it come from, what do they say is in it. Um, there's a lot of work about bill of materials and composition analysis, analysis and all those things that you need to know about <laughs> what's in a container and the- Everyone the wants to know what's in a container. I mean, if you've got a Kubernetes cluster, for instance, that's whole, highly secure and in comes a container, mm, how do you know what the, you know, there's no perimeter, right? So again, as you said, thinking like an attack vector there, you got to understand that this is where, this is where the action is, right? This is where you, where a lot of work's being done on this idea yeah. of always on security. You don't know what the container's coming in. That has to be vetted during the run stage. You're running a business now. It's not just build and share. It's you're running infrastructure. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you really want full control about everything that goes into it. And you want to know where everything that you're running in production came from. And you really tie this as an end to, you know, that's your end to end supply chain of everything from developer inputs to and um, um, through the build process and right to production and in production, you know, understanding whether it needs to be updated and um, whether there's newly discovered vulnerabilities and, yeah. and whether it's being attacked and how that relates back to yeah. what came into it in the first place. A lot more intelligence, a lot more uh, monitoring. You guys are enabling all that. I know it's cool, uh, great stuff. Hey, I want to get your thoughts on, uh, Justin, what got you here on the calendar. I'm looking at the DockerCon 20, one event and that we're having a fun time here with. We're on the cube track, got the keynote track, but if you look at the sessions that's going on, you got, I want to get your comment on, on this because it's really interesting how it's cleverly laid out this is. You got the classic run, share, build, and then you got a track called accelerate. Interesting um, metadata around these labels. Take us through, uh, because this basically shows the maturation of containers. I mean, we already talked about the relationship, you know, somewhat with Kubernetes, everyone has kind of sees that direction clearly, but you got acceleration, which is a key new track, but run, share, build. What's your reaction to that? What, you know, what's uh, share your observations of what the layout on those names and what it means to an enterprise and people building? Yeah, I mean, 
Um, Belcher Run has been Docker's kind of motto for um, a long time. It kind of it kind of encapsulates um, that kind of process of like um, you know the developer building application, the collaborative piece that's really important about sharing content and containers, um, and then obviously putting it into production because that's the aim. But you know, accelerate is um, is incredibly important too. I mean, people developers are just being asked to do a lot. Everything is software. There's a lot of software, and um, a lot of software has to be created. And we've got to make it easier to do this. And and you know, really, um, you know, the the, the that kind of um, getting quickly from um, idea to business outcomes and results is really what, you know, is what modern software teams are really driving at. And, you know, I think we, we've really been focused on this, you know, this last year on what, what the team needs to succeed. Um, and, you know, especially, you know, small focused teams delivering business value. It's how we're structured internally as well. Um, and it's how our customers you know, to a large extent, uh, are structured, and it's um, that kind of that kind of focus on accelerating those, you know, business outcomes and the feedback loops from from you know your ideas to what the feedback that your customers give you, um, and helping you understand that is really important. Talk about uh, final question for you on, on in terms of the topic here: uh, cloud, hybrid cloud, multi cloud. This is a, the put multi cloud aside; it's more hype. Uh, you know, everyone has multiple clouds, but it speaks to the general distributed computing architecture. When you talk about public cloud and on-premises, cloud operations. So modern developers looking at that as, okay, distributed environment, edge, whatever you want to call it. What's your view of Docker as it goes forward for the folks watching who have experience with Docker, love the, the vibe, love the open source, but now got to start thinking about putting the containers everywhere. What's the, what's, the, what's the Docker pitch, so to speak, or the tech story that they should walk away with from you? What's the, what's the story? What's the pitch? Yeah, so, I mean, containers everywhere has been a sort of emerging trend for a while. The last year or so, the whole Kubernetes at the edge uh, thing has really exploded with people experimenting with lots and lots of different architectures for different kinds of environments at the edge. Um, what's totally clear is that um, people want to be able to update software really easily at the edge the way you can in the cloud. We can't have this kind of, you know, there's no point shipping a modern, you know, piece of equipment, manufacturing equipment that you can't update the software on because the software is how it works. Um, more and more, um, equipment is becoming very general purpose. People making general purpose robots, general purpose factories, general purpose everything, which need to be specialized into the application they're going to run that week. Um, and also people are getting more and more, you know, feedback and uh, um, data and, up and feedback from the data. So if you're building something that runs on a farm, you're getting permanent feedback about how well it's doing and what it's, um, you know, whether it's how well the crops are growing, what's coming back. And so everywhere you've got this, we need to update. And everywhere you need to update, you want containers because containers are the simple, reliable way to update software. I know you talked about CNCF and your role there, also the CTO of Docker. I have to ask, because we were just covered KubeCon and CloudNativeCon um, just last month and uh, well, this month and um, it's clear that Kubernetes is becoming boringly good in a, in a way that's good to be boring, right? It means it's working. And it's becoming more cloud native con than KubeCon. <laughs> um, that was been kind of the, our, our kind of editorial observation, which speaks to what we feel is a trend towards more cloud native discussions, less about Kubernetes. So, I mean, there's still Kubernetes stuff going on. Not to, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying it's that it's not as controversial in the sense that people kind of clearly understand why that's important. And all the discussions now are on, seem to be on cloud native modern developer workflows. What's your reaction to that? Do you agree? Um, if not, uh, what's your take? Yeah, I think that's definitely true. 
Kubernetes is definitely much more boring. Everyone is using it. Uh, they're using it in production now vastly more than they were a few years ago when it was just experiment, experiment, experiment. Now it's production scale out. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, the ecosystem in CNCF is, is kind of huge. I mean, there's so many little bits that have to be filled in, storage and networking and all yeah. that. So there's actually a lot of pieces that are around Kubernetes, but um, there's definitely more of a focus coming on the developer experience there. I mean, compared to DockerCon, the audience at KubeCon is, and CloudNativeCon is still much more operator focused rather than developer focused. And um, and it's quite it's it's very nice coming to DockerCon, you know, just to feel like, you know, amongst that developer community. Um, KubeCon still has a way to go to have more of a real developer audience. Um, but there are you know the projects are you know starting to appear with a more developer focused um, kind of aim. Things like Backstage from Spotify is a really interesting one where it's you know it's about operations, but it's develop it's a developer portal focused thing. So so I think it's happening, and there's a lot more talk about that. Um, there's a whole bunch of infrastructure. There's a lot more security yeah. projects in CNCF than there were before, and there's a, we're doing a lot of work on supply chain security in CNCF. Just released a white paper on that um, a few days ago. So there's a lot, there's a lot of work there that touches on developer needs. I think I still think that the, the audience for KubeCon is still um, still that that much different from DockerCon, which is I think 80% um, developers yeah. and maybe 10 percent infrastructure rather yeah. than the other way around. I so think it's it's it's, 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 it's a more field. the SRE. It's, if you're going to get operators, it can be SRE slash yeah, yeah, platform yeah. leads. I mean, the platform leads are definitely inside DockerCon now than they've ever been before from my observation. So, but that speaks to the sign of the times. Most development teams have an SRE in the team, not an SRT, SRE team. They just start yeah. to see much more integration amongst the kind of a threaded or threaded teams or whatnot. So yeah, I mean, build, build and operate your apps is, is the model. And I think that's going to lead to more and more crossover between these between these communities. I mean, that's, that's what DevOps was supposed to be about. <laughs> okay. Somehow got diverted into building DevOps teams instead of working together, but we'll get there. It's clear from my standpoint, at least we're reporting here, is that from the DockerCon community and at large cloud, cloud native community, having end-to-end -end workload visibility on developer, test run, everything seems to be the consensus without a doubt. And then having multiple yeah. teams, and then having some platform, and have some have some flexing people moving between teams for the most part. But built-in security, built-in SRE, built-in DevOps, DevSecOps, all the way end to end. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we we know that that's what does work best. It's where um, most organizations are heading at, at different speeds because it's very different from the traditional architecture, and for, it takes time to get there. But the um, you know the the that's the kind of, that's the model that's come out of microservices that really containers enabled and allowed that model to happen, and it's it is the it's the team architecture of containers. Hey, monolithic applications have monolithic organizations. Microservices have microservices teams. Justin, great to have you on the cube for this conversation. Um, if folks watching this interview, check out Justin's keynote came from the main stage, great stuff. Justin, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate your time and insight. Thank you, good to see you again. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage of DockerCon 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host, thanks for watching.